God reveals himself in different ways. You've heard that God is everywhere at all times. The omnipresence of God, right? And yet you also know that God does not reveal himself everywhere. You see, God is in the market, but he does not regularly reveal himself in a market. There is a specific place that he regularly reveals himself. That if I want to meet God at a higher level or in a deeper level of intimacy, it's not to the market that I will go. It's not to the bank that I will go. There's a specific place I go to. So yes, we have the omnipresence of God everywhere, but the revealed presence of God is not everywhere. It's in certain places. And you cannot carry it to your place. You cannot be the Lord of God and you tell him, now this is the place I've chosen for you to reveal yourself. You come and reveal yourself to me. No. According to scripture, he reveals himself at the place that he has determined. I, I believe it's in the book of uh, Deuteronomy where he says to his people that um, when I bring you into a land which I will, I'm taking you to, you will come, you know, three times a year, you will come to the place where I will choose to place my name. He says something like that. You know, you can find it in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. That uh, you will come three times, uh, your men and, you know, will come and present themselves before me in the place that I will choose to put my name. Now, at that time, he had not yet chosen, he had not revealed to them the entire, the fact that he was going, he had in mind uh, to bring up a temple. But eventually, centuries later, he actually tells them where he has placed his name, and that is on the, you know, in, on the Temple Mount, and then he reveals himself there. You see? So you can't just, you can't be an Israelite, and then you say, I will go anywhere in Israel. After all, he's the God of Israel. Yes, he's the God of Israel. So you can't say that I will reveal myself, you know, I'll meet God anywhere. Three times a year, you are supposed to go to, up to Jerusalem, and present yourself at the temple. Why? Because he chose to put his name there. Now the person who chose to put his name there is the omnipresent God. He has been with you in your garden. But he expects you to present yourself before him in a unique way at Jerusalem, in the new city, at the temple. The, because, you see, God understands that there are different levels of intensity of his revelation. There are different levels of intensity of his revelation. Praise the Lord Jesus. In Deuteronomy 16, 16. Um, three times in a year shall all your males appear before Yahweh your God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord, your God, which he has given you. So the focus here is that you present yourself in the place which who chooses? He chooses. Not we choose. Who does the choosing? It's God. Most people say, I will not go to church. God is everywhere. Let me pray in my living room. Guess what? You've reversed the roles. You are not the king of God. You are not the one to tell him where he should appear and present himself and meet you. You don't meet him on your terms. If you are to have real intimacy with him, it has to be on his terms. As king, not when you are the one kinging, kinging him around, bossing him around. Scripture says, in the place he shall choose. And you know, he gives them the order of how they are supposed to uh, uh, meet. Three times. Yeah, he mentions which those three times are. Then uh, uh, he mentions that they shall not come empty handed. You know, then he, give, uh, he guides them on how to give. You understand? So he lays out the pattern of how he's going to relate with them when they meet him in the place that he chooses. The entire pattern. The venue, the time, the manner of giving, and all this kind of thing. So, 
it's a very ridiculous thing for someone to come and say, even people who start ministries, it's important that you, li- you listen to this. When you're starting a ministry, pray to God. Ask him, which place have you chosen? Which place have you chosen? That's a very, very important thing. God does not reveal himself anywhere, although he is everywhere. Praise the Lord Jesus. Wonderful. So, back to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation talks about um, the Lord Jesus coming up, and then it says that he comes with his army. And that is where, that is what we are calling the horse riders. Verse, um, verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. These armies, we, are, we can understand from the context that the armies, first of all, they are following him upon white horses. They are also clothed in fine linen, white and clean, just like he himself has a white horse. You know there are horses in heaven. There are horses in heaven. You know, most people think there are only horses on the earth. There are horses in heaven. There are spiritual horses. Some of them were sent to pick um, the prophet Elijah. You understand? So, there are horses there. And then he says that just like he has a horse, the armies in heaven have horses. We come on horses. Just like he has a robe, a white robe. Just his armies also are clothed in fine linen, white and clean, right? Now, that also presupposes that they are coming on the same mission as him. What is his mission? Verse one, uh, uh, chapter eleven tells us, and he that sat upon it, the horse, was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. That is the mission that brings him riding on a white horse. That means that is the mission that is shared in by the white horse riders, the armies that are coming with him from heaven. They have the same mission, to judge and to make war. What are they judging? I'll come to that. Why are they making war? They are making war, and the scripture here has said very clearly, and I'll come back to it throughout the course of this message, that verse 15 out of his mouth goes forth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations so there is a smiting of nations is coming against nations and remember from what we have been sharing in the previous messages he smites not just nations he smites rebellious nations the nations that want to rebel against his kingship and his lordship the other ones that he's waging war against. That is the first thing. The second reason why he is waging war is because these people are, are anti righteousness. So he comes to wage war in defense of the saints, in your defense, in my defense. When the nations pass bad laws that disenfranchise, that uh, steal and rob and weaken the church of God and the children of God the child of God, God does not like that. It's not a righteous thing for nations to abuse their power. You understand? So, he has actually ordained a day when he shall come to judge and to wage war against rebellious nations. Not all nations will be rebellious, but some will be. Now, these horse riders, and I'm going to build this, these horse riders, just move with me slowly but surely. These horse riders, Flip back to the book before Revelation. It's called Jude. Excellent. In the book of Jude, Jude is the brother of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and was one of the apostles, the early apostles. Jude, in, uh, Jude 1 verse 14, Jude the apostle quotes the patriarch Enoch concerning something, this mission, this very, very important end-time mission. 